Okay, so um, so we were having a discussion on finding the second max using n plus little o of n comparisons, right? This was an exercise, did anybody try? No, okay. So, so okay, I'll let you think about it. Um, Build a maxi, how much time does it take? It's O-N. I don't want O-N. I'm talking about O-N. You can, we can find second max and 2-N comparisons easily anyway. So, my question was about 1-N plus little o-N, right? Okay. Um, so, this is a puzzle again. I'll, I'll try and give you a puzzle every day you can think about. Um, So just where we were, we um, set up some notation, this big O notation and uh, we were looking at merge sort and also binary search and we were trying to analyze them using a recurrence relation. So what we saw was for binary search, the recurrence so, how does binary search work? You have, you are searching for some element x in some array on n elements. This is sorted and the algorithm is, you know, okay. It, it, I mean, you all understand what binary search is, go to the middle and compare, but actually coding it carefully requires a lot of work, okay, um, because there are many ways one can make mistakes. So the algorithm would simply say if x is less than or equal to a, let us say floor n by 2, then search x in the first n by 2 elements, else, okay, so maybe I should say this a 1 to n. So this would be a 1 to n by 2, else search in, search for x in a n by 2 plus 1 to n. So recursively, right? That's all the algorithm is. So you have a large array of n elements arranged in increasing order. All we are doing is check, compare your x with the middle element. Okay, n may not be even, so this notation means divide by two and round it down. This floor. Okay. So if x is less than or equal to this, then I know that if x is there at all. It must be in the first half, so I search here. Otherwise, I just search in this half, okay. So let us see, what if um, n is 3, what will this do? So I am going to search with x is less than, so this is from x1 alone, this will be because floor of 3 by 2 is floor of 1.5 which is 1 because I am rounding it down, right. So this will be search in a1, otherwise if x is bigger than a1, I am going to search in 2 and 3 recursively.
what if n is 1, what will it do? Well, maybe I would write here. If n is greater than 1, I am going to do it. Else, if when will L supply, I am going to come out and say when n is 1, if x is equal to a 1, return s, else return no. Right, this n keeps changing anyway. So, so now how do I analyze this? Well, you know, we I, we analyzed it in the first lecture itself, sort of like I discussed it in terms of I think of a number and you're going to ask me yes or no questions and find the number, and the way sort of argued is that you know log n many questions is what we'll do, but let's let's carefully analyze it. So how do I do it? I write it as a recurrence relation, right? Because it's a recursive algorithm, the recurrence relation would be if t of n is the number of comparisons used for the algorithm. If n is equal to 1, what is it? If there is only one element, I'm going to make one comparison. Else, it's you make this comparison, this is a comparison. Plus either 1 to floor n by 2 or floor n by 2 plus 1 to n. Okay. So, the maximum would be, so this will be like ceiling n by 2. Otherwise, right. Okay. I'm going to say less than or equal to because I am picked the larger size array here. Okay. So, what we did was assuming n is a power of 2, we analyzed this. Okay. So, today what I want to get to is what if n is not a power of 2, how do I analyze it? Right? So, if n is equal to a power of 2, it's, life is easy. Then we have t of 1 is 1 and t of n is 1 plus t of n by 2. I do not have to worry about floor ceiling because n is divisible by 2 any number of times. How do I solve it? Well, keep expanding this, right? This is 1 plus what is t of n by 2? Apply the same equation. It is what? 1 plus t of n by 4. This is equal to 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus t of n by 8. And so, this would be, you know, 3 times t of n by 8. So, if you do a k times, but n is 2 power k. So, n by 2 power k is 1 and t of 1 is 1. So, this will be like a 1. So, this will be k plus 1. So, if n is a power of 2, then we saw k, k is log n because when n is 2 power k, k is log n to the base 2. That is the definition of log n, right. So, you will have log n plus 1 many comparisons you have done, okay. This is something we saw in the first lecture itself that, you know, essentially if you end up with the a problem which is half the size after making one step, then you expect roughly log n. Okay. okay, so what if n is not a power of 2? And if I really want to solve this recurrence where I have the ceiling n by 2, what is the guess first of all? So, if n is not a power of 2, then um, how many comparisons and how do we solve it. Right? So, again if you think about our first way, the way we reduced the range, if I thought of a number between 1 and 1024, then you can find the answer in about 10 questions. But if I just go, let us say if I go 2000, what do you expect? Hmm? 
you know, just, just one extra question will is some sort of a rounding is what you expect, ok. So, the real solution to this we claim ceiling log n because log n may not be an integer if n is not a power of 2 plus 1 instead of log n plus 1 I expect the solution to be this. How do we prove this? Well, there are two ways to prove it. One is that we can apply induction. So, even this you apply induction, right. So, if, I, if you want to show that if n is a power of 2, this solution solves to k plus 1, how do I prove it by induction? For n equal to 1, it is true. Actually, it is not true, right. Uh, no, we are talking about log n plus 1, right. So, if n equal to 1, k is 0. So, it is 0 plus 1 and that is the base case and assume by induction hypothesis that for all small values of n that if, if it is a power of 2, then it is k plus 1, then n by 2 is 2 power k minus 1. So, the number of powers of 2 in n by 2 is k minus 1. So, to solve this by induction hypothesis is k minus 1 plus 1 and then plus this one. So, this will become k plus 1 that is what we want to show. So, this is this is another way to prove by induction. So, now if I want to do the same thing when n is not a power of 2, well I can let us try and prove this using the ceiling it will be slightly messy, but I will also tell you a, a different way of doing it. So, I want to prove this by induction, right. So, for n equal to 1, ceiling log n plus 1 is 1 anyway, which is equal to t of 1. So, that is the base case, right. So, assume claim for all integers m less than n. Now, for t of n, it is 1 plus t of ceiling n by 2. So, it is 1 plus for ceiling n by 2, if I apply my induction hypothesis, what is it? It is ceiling log ceiling n by 2 plus 1, right. Now, this is we want what do we want this to be? We want this to be at most 1 plus ceiling log n. This is what I want to prove. So, one, one way to do it, I mean if you are comfortable with ceilings, you can expand inequalities and do it, but let us suppose n is not a power of 2. Then you know that n lies between two consecutive powers, right. take any n, it lies between two consecutive powers of 2, right. So, n by 2 j minus 2. So, now if I take ceiling n by 2, that means I am going up. So, I might become equal to 2 power j minus 1. and still greater than 2 power j minus 2. 
So now if you take log of ceiling n by 2, what do you get? And take round it up, it will be j minus 1, right? This whole thing, since n is, so log of ceiling n by 2 would be some number which is less than or equal to j minus 1. So when I round it up, it will be j minus 1. So this will be j minus 1 and I have plus 1 on both sides. So this would be j plus 1. So this plus 1, that plus 1. So this will be j plus 1. And what is j? j is ceiling log n. plus 1 because n is lying between 2 power j minus 1 and 2 power j. So, if I take log n, it will be some number between j minus 1 and j. So, when I round it up, it will become j. Okay. So, I mean intuitively this is what you expect. We can try small examples. We know it is just the question of rounding it, but it is important to be you know, aware of the correct bound and be able to prove it. Okay, let's. So the other other uh, algorithm we analyzed using um, recursion is merge sort. I mean, this also we wrote down the algorithm, we analyzed it, assuming n is a power of 2, but let us see what if n is not a power of 2 and we will get more precise bound even in this case. So, how does the algorithm work? Well, we will sort the first half recursively. Sort the second half recursively. Okay. The problem again, you are given an array and I want to arrange it in increasing order. Okay, this is the sorting problem. Okay. So, trivial algorithm would be like n square time by taking making all possible comparisons, and we are trying to improve that using divide and conquer algorithmic paradigm. So, what is how does the algorithm work? We take the first half and sort it. Okay. How do I sort it? Recursively. Recursively means the algorithm calls itself. So, it will divide it into two halves, it will divide into two halves. Eventually, it will apply the same algorithm to sort it, sort this first half. Similarly, we will do the same, sort the second half. Now, what is our situation? This is sorted, this is sorted. Okay, so, second half recursively. Now, what is left is to merge these two sorted lists, right. So, imagine you are so your first array may look like this, second array may look like this, which means individually it is arranged in increasing order. But to now make the whole thing arranged in increasing order, we need to do what is called the merge operation, which is an external subroutine, we went through it and we argued that the number of comparisons made by that algorithm is at most more precisely n minus 1, but let us assume it is n comparisons. Then, okay, all this is if n is greater than 1, else, you know, return. AI, right? If there is only one element, you do not have to do anything. Okay, this is, you know, recursive algorithms need a bail condition out. Okay, so that is what this is. So, now how did we analyze this algorithm? We wrote down that oh, I want to compute T of n. Let us again count the number of comparisons made by the algorithm. If n is 1, there is only one element, you are not doing anything, so it is 0. 
otherwise it is 2 times T of n by 2 plus n because the time to sort the first half is T of n by 2 because it is the same algorithm I am applying on an input of size n by 2. Similarly, the second half is 2 T of n by another n by 2 and merge is an external routine. So, this is what it is. Now, the question is how do we solve it? We argued if n is a power of 2 by the same kind of an argument if I keep expanding this this will be n plus 2 times t of n by 2, this will be n plus 2 times if I apply the same equation for t of n by 2, it will be n by 2 plus 2 times t of n by 4. So, this will be n plus n 2 n plus 2 square times t of n by 4 and you keep expanding it and two n plus two square times t of n by four this will be 2 n plus 2 square times if I apply the same thing again it is 2 n by 4 sorry n by 4 plus 2 t of n by 8. So, this will be you know this will cancel out and become 3 n plus 2 cubed t of n by 8. So, you see this pattern happening. So, when uh, I will have k n, so dot 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 plus 2 power k t of n by 2 power k and n by 2 power k is 1 and t of 1 is 0. So, this whole thing will go away and so this is n times k which is n times log n because when is 2 power k it will be log n. So, this is when n is a power of 2, but what if n is not a power of 2? How do I you know analyze this algorithm? Because first of all n by 2 will not be an integer, may not be an integer. So, more precisely if I have to write this, it will be a little mess. Right. So, one half will be rounded down, other half will be rounded up and plus n. Okay. Now, so if you really you know you, you want exact solution for these kind of recurrences, now if I would refer you to this book Concrete Mathematics. You know, some of your math students should be interested in this. This is due to Knuth, Patashnik, and Graham, where you can look at equations like floors and ceilings and and try and compute this exact solution. It's it's a whole you know new, I mean, interesting fun set of things, but. For our case, we want approximate, we want, we are interested in estimate, upper bound, maybe even in the big O world, we want to know what it is, right. So, first of all, in the big O world, what do you expect it to be? We expect it to be some order n log n, okay. So, it is not going to be any different simply because your numbers are suddenly, you know, off by 1. It is not exactly n by 2, maybe it is n by 2 plus 1. That is not going to change the asymptotic. So, one can prove again by induction this is at most some c n log n, <coughs> but if I let us try and make a guess and prove it 
by induction and I want to say that the way I argued um, for binary search, I want to say that you know n ceiling log n. Uh, so, all, all along I am counting the number of comparisons made by the algorithm. So, let us try and prove this by induction. Base case when n is 1, well, you know, that is clear. So, let us assume it is true for m. So, I am going to by induction on n. So, base n is equal to 1, you can verify. So, at the induction step, we assume it is true for n less than m and let us try and prove it for m. It is t of okay. So, by induction hypothesis, this is at most log ok. I, I would not do this very often, so you know bear with me once you need to go through this and understand make sure you know precisely what it is ok. You know there is a floor inside the log and there is a ceiling outside you know. We, we will not be dealing all these things all the time, okay. So, I, I, but I thought at least once you should see it more precisely what it is, okay. Plus right, this is what it is. Do you see why this is true? Because I am applying induction hypothesis here. So, by induction hypothesis, this term is upper bounded by whatever here log of that and take the ceiling and similarly here and plus m ok. So, now so I can write this easily that this is less than or equal to m by 2 plus I am going to put a ceiling m by 2 here and upper bound it. Plus m, okay. So, this one I am replacing by ceiling log m by 2 and upper bounding it. Then it becomes the same as this. So, I am taking that out and this will be floor plus ceiling. Floor plus ceiling is exactly m by 2. So, no, it is exactly m, okay. it is m log ceiling m by 2. Oh, actually I should put a right floor m by 2 plus ceiling m by 2 is exactly m because one is half, half minus 1, other is plus 1 and they become ok. So, now let us apply the same kind of a trick which I did before. If m is not a power of 2, then it lies between 2 consecutive powers of 2. So, m by 2 would be like this. So, now when I take ceiling m by 2, it may become equal to 2 power i minus 1 because there may be a plus 1 which I get it. And so, when I take log and take the ceiling, it can at most become i minus 1. So, this would be equal to m into i minus 1 plus m where m is like this.
So, this will be m into i and what is i? i is exactly ceiling log m because when I take log m, it will be a number between i minus 1 and i. So, when I round it up, it becomes i uh, log m. So, this will be ok. So, that is that is it ok. So, this is one of this is the first n log n sorting algorithm we are seeing it and it is very important for you to know that you can sort in n log n time, sort n numbers in n log n time, not just comparison, but also other operations moves and everything else and sorting is useful because it helps you to search and we can do binary search in logarithmic time ok. So, this is what we learned, we looked at divide and conquer, we looked at recurrences. Okay, let us continue more on divide and conquer. So, let us look at a new problem okay, and get back to some interesting stuff. Let us look at a problem. So, you have an array of numbers these numbers are positive, negative, zero, whatever right? and the output I want. subarray with maximum sum that is the goal ok. So, subarray means it is contiguous. So, let us look at an example. So, suppose this is my array. Okay. And the problem I am interested in is give me some sub contiguous sub array which gives me the maximum sum. So, let us call this array. A and this is my indices. Okay. So, is the problem clear? So, as always, let us try and think of a. So, imagine these are some share value changes or something. Okay. So, what is, what is this array with maximum sum? Imagine. I'm uh, the, these are this is the fluctuation of some share price. Okay, maybe it start. So let's say the share price here was some x. Here it became x plus five. Then it became x plus five minus three. So it's x minus x plus two. Then it became x plus nine. But then here it became x minus one, and so on. Okay. Now so I want to know when should I buy the share and when should I sell it, so that I maximize my profit. So, what I am interested in is exactly the maximum contiguous sum ok. But let us as always think of a first give me a brute force algorithm, you know I, I, I keep telling this always because you need some benchmark to start with and then try and improve. So, what would be a brute force algorithm? Hmm? Okay. 
Okay, so one, one suggestion is try all possible sums and pick the maximum. How many possible sums are there? How many possible sums are there? Yes, let us get some answer from there. How many, you know, I am what am I looking for, right? I am looking for some i, some j such that a i to a j sum is maximized. So, how many possible i j pairs are there? Hello? Is the question clear? Is your mic on? <laughs> Are people awake? <laughs> yes. So, yeah. Sorry. Okay. okay. So, n into n plus 1 by 2 was that was the suggestion given here as well. So, all I am looking for is ij pair where i is less than j, right? And i takes a value. So, I has like you know I can be less than or equal to j fine ok. So, anyway roughly there are n square pairs right. So, you pick some i has some n choices and j has some remaining choices. So, n square such pairs are there. So, how much time will this algorithm takes if I just try all possible n square pairs find the sum and pick the maximum sum. How much time? Suddenly there is too much silence. Hmm? In the in the big O notation, yes. N square? Is it really N square? Or even more? Okay, so, I am going to say algorithm 1, try all possible sums and pick the max, right. So, for a fixed i j, how much time will it take? So, suppose I fix, I am going to say this is an i I am going to fix and here is a j I am going to fix. How much time will it take to find the sum? How many additions will I do? Hmm? At most n, more precisely for a fi if I fix an i and a j, j minus i right? because I am adding j minus i in numbers. Right, so that many additions. So, that is like, so is that an n cubed algorithm? Yes, no, n cubed, n square, what, what are people thinking? So, if I, if I am counting the number of additions, first I am talking with about a brute force algorithm trying all possible sums, what would be the algorithm's running time? It is not complicated and this is only the third lecture we are talking about, come on. Naively, if you think about it, it looks like an n cubed algorithm because there are n square possible things and each one may take up to linear time. So, it is n cubed, but is it really n cubed? Can I do better? What 
why? I mean, late afternoon or the numbers have come down or what is the story? I mean, unless unusual calm. So I, I can do this following, right? For i going from 1 to n, for j going from i plus 1 to n, compute a i plus a i plus 1 plus up to a j and you know I have a max is equal to something minus infinity or something if sum is greater than max replace the max by sum this is my more or less the entire algorithm right this max has the max sum right I have two for loops I start with i and j, all I am trying to do is to compute the value of this sum a i to a j. The sum I obtain it and I have a running max variable which maintains the max sum so far. So if this sum is greater than max, I am going to replace that max by the sum. Finally, I will have the max which will have the sum. So this looks like an n cubed algorithm because there are two for loops that is n square and here I have uh, something like a linear time thing. But can I not do this little more efficiently, right? So if I have computed from i to j and if I want to compute j plus 1, do I have to do this whole thing? I just take the last sum and add j plus 1. So incrementally for a fixed i, for a fixed i, I can compute sum of all the j's in linear time, right? Fix an i, then incrementally go on up to this point, I have added, I have got the sum and so on and so forth and, you know, eventually I will get, for a fixed i, I can do in linear time. all sum from i to j, right, all j's. So overall, it is an n square algorithm. Okay. First of all, do you realize that these negative numbers are really the ones that are causing problems, right? So if I have, if all numbers are positive, then what do you do? Hmm? Entire sum that is the maximum contiguous sum, right? Because of these negative numbers, it is going up and down. So, the contiguous sum keeps changing, okay. So, is the n square algorithm clear? Just two loops. Of, so, for fixed, so I start from 1, compute the sum starting at this point, you know, and keep track of the sums and pick the max sum, go all the way. That is like linear time. And then I move my i to here and I keep doing this. That is another linear time another linear time. So overall in n square time I have computed all possible sums and I can find the max, okay. Now let us try and improve this to get an n log n algorithm using divide and conquer, something like what we did for merge sort, okay. So what do I have to do? First step, find the max subarray sum in the first half. How? I am going to do it recursively. Find the max subarray sum in the second half. Okay. 
Now, what is left to do? So, I have taken my array divided into two halves and find among all possible sums in the first half, I found the maximum sum recursively. Similarly, I have done it in the second half, right. Now, what is left? Hmm? Right. So, now I need a subarray among all the subarrays which span both halves. I want to find the maximum subarray, right. Then I have to pick the max of the three things and that is my output, right. So, from here I will take the first half among all the things here I pick the maximum sum, second half pick the maximum sum, then I need to find among this is the relatively harder thing to do. So, find max subarray sum among subarrays that span both halves or that intersect that is what I have to do then I pick the max of the three things. Let us see how I can do this. Then we will write a recurrence relation, then we, we will be way back to merge sort like solution, right. So, so I have this huge array, and I said among all sub arrays here I found one sum ok. Maybe it starts here and ends here and this gives me the maximum sum. Among all on this side alone I have got something here which gives me the maximum sum ok. So, now I want among all the sub arrays where i is from here and j is from here I want to find the sum max sub array sum. How many possible i j's are there? Where i is from the left and j is from the right. Yeah, asymptotically, how many subarrays are there? But how many possible choices for i? How many choices for j? So, how many possible subarrays are there? Hmm. So, you have n square such choices, we do not want to run through all of them and because that will defeat and get me an n square algorithm. So, I want to somehow find the maximum subarray of this thing that spans both intersects both the arrays and so what is my goal here, how much time am I allowed if I really want to care get a linear n log n algorithm going from merge sort recurrence and analysis, hmm? I want linear time. Remember merge sort was 2 t of n by 2 plus order n gave us an n log n solution. So, I have t of n by 2, t of n by 2. So, if I manage to find this portion in linear time, I have an n log n algorithm, ok. So, you know, so here is an example of our recurrence also guides our algorithm. We know what if I want an n log n algorithm then I want this to be found in linear time. At least that is one example where we know the solution to the recurrence is n log n. So, let us see how I can find this in linear time, right. Any ideas? I mean why it could be something like this I am looking for, so it need not end at n by 2 it could that is the kind of thing I want yes.
So, is the question clear? Uh, among all the subarrays that starts from the left and ends at the right, I want to be able to find the max sum. Okay. So, So, one thing we know is that that should definitely contain this mid element, right. Any such segment which you are looking at should contain this mid element, okay. So, okay. Yes. So, what about I start at the middle. And I go right, check all of them and find the one which gives me the maximum sum. All or up to the maximum subarray of that Yeah, but I would not know it until I find check them all, right? No, I have to put the maximum Ah, so this subarray. Ah. ah, okay, okay. So one suggestion is so if I know the endpoint of this. Right. So, no point in going above because, oh here. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, but it does not even matter. Just to be, make my proof of correctness simple, I try, start from here. And I keep going to each of them and find the maximum sum. Suppose I find out that this is the place I got the maximum sum, okay, starting from here. There is no point in extending this because the sum is going to go down. Similarly, I do start from here and go left and find the point which gives me the maximum sum and take these two together and that is what is going to give me the maximum sum. Right? Because I am forced to include the midpoint because we are looking at that kind of subarrays now. So, I start from the middle, go keep going to the right, keep going to the left and pick the maximum sum and add it and how much time does that take? Just linear time because this point is fixed. So, I am just you know every time I am adding adding something new and keeping track of the max total sum. So, eventually I will, this is a linear time, that is a linear time thing. So, overall in linear time I can find, okay. So, I am going to skip the details and say that can be done, this can be done in order n time. I, I mean I already told you how to do it. So, my overall run time is so that is order n log n. Okay, so we are going to see more and more applications of divide and conquer and that is what I am trying to cover, right. Just give you examples where divide and conquer is useful. How do you even solve, analyze divide and conquer based algorithms typically using recurrence relations. So, the puzzle for the day today. find the linear time of that requires some you know a different technique, but it these are all very nice interview questions, puzzles. So, fun to try them. Okay, clear? Finding the max subarray. The brute force, you know, naively n cubed, but if you are a little careful n square using divide and conquer, you can get it to n log n, but I am saying you can actually solve it in linear time as well. 
think about it. Yeah. Here is very fundamental problem multiplying two n bit numbers. We will see how divide and conquer will be very useful to improve naive algorithm. Okay. Now, so you have so instead of n bit numbers think of them as n digit numbers then you have, you've have run through you've seen it in your high school how to multiply two n digit numbers right so it doesn't matter whether you call it you know think of it as binary numbers or decimal numbers now your the multiplication algorithm you learnt in high school to multiply two five digit numbers, 10 digit numbers, whatever. Let us see how many single digit multiplications does the algorithm do. So, I want to multiply these three, right. Remember the your high school multiplication algorithm, which will multiply all of this by this, right. Then you will do a shift, then you will do a shift and then finally you add them all. Right. So, how many single digit multiplication does your algorithm do? Yes, question clear? You want to multiply two n, n digit numbers, I mean there is single digit multiplication there is addition there are so many things that is happening. So, overall I want to compute the running time of this algorithm. The algorithm which you have learnt in school and for me a time is a single digit multiplication or addition whatever I am doing. So, what is the running time? N to the power? Yes, do you see n square? n times n, right, because there will be n multiplications here, because this whole thing is multiplied by this, and then another n multiplication here, because everything will be multiplied by this, and so on and so forth. So, if you look at the total number of multiplications, that will be like n square and then you are adding all of this again another n square. Yes, clear? So, this is an n square algorithm and we want to improve it using divide and conquer. Well, how will I do divide and conquer based on the merge sort example or the maximum array example. Somehow, I want to be able to reduce my problem to some number of n by 2 by n by 2 digit multiplications and then some put them together. So, that is the conquer part, right. So, divide my problem somehow, reduce it to some number of n by 2 by n by 2 digit multiplications which I will do recursively and then I put them together, right. So, can you tell me a natural way to do that? Yes, so I take this input, again for now assume that n is a power of 2 and I divide this into two parts. So, so let's 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 actually do some example right so suppose i want to do
So, I want to multiply this, right. So, what I do, I look at this, yes, exactly. So, I can write this number as 3, 4, 7, 6 into 10 power 4 plus 5, 8, 2, 3. And this is 7, 6, 3, 2 into 10 power 4 plus 5, 8, 1, 6. So, when I want to multiply by this 2 8 digit numbers, and when I break it up like this, in general you can think of it as something like A1 into 10 power n by 2 plus a 2 and this would be like b 1 into 10 power n by 2 plus b 2. And what do I know about a, a 1? It is an n by 2 digit number, b, b 1 is an n by 2 digit number, a 2 is an n by 2 digit number, b 2 is an n by 2 digit number. So, somehow I can recurse, right. So, suppose I, this is my a and this is B. What is A B? So, it is you know the standard algebraic multiplication gives me A 1 B 1 into 10 power n plus A 1 into B 2 plus A 2 into B 1 into 10 power n by 2 plus A 2 B 2. Right. So, now this 10 power n, 10 power n by 2 multiplications are easy because that is just some shift adding so many zeros, right. So, now to multiply 2 n digit numbers, so let us write a recurrence relation for it, right. Suppose T of n is the number of multiplications or total time to multiply 2 n digit numbers, then can you tell me the recurrence relation? So, here is 1 n by 2 by n by 2 multiplication, here is 1, here is 1, here is 1. There are 4 number of n by 2 by n by 2 multiplications. After that, you know, so this will be like a huge 2, you know, it is like, I mean, this may be an n n by 2 digit number, n by 2 digit number, when you multiply you might get n digits. This will be like n digit, then you are doing some shifts and then another n digit, your addition, all that I am going to account for and say it is order n, okay. Because you are talking about some addition of numbers, each of it is like an n digit number. Okay, so natural attempt, I am not sure that this is going to give us the best algorithm because we have to analyze this and find the solution for this recurrence relation. But the natural thing to do is to divide it into two halves and then realize that your product is nothing but this, 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 the 4 t of n by 2 problems of size n by 2 because a 1 is an n by 2 size number a 2 is an n by 2 size number. So, it is 4 multiplications of n by 2 size and then the rest of it I am going to absorb it in order n because that is just an n digit number, you are shifting it, you are adding 2 n digit numbers, you know doing some shifts and all that, okay. So, now let us analyze the solution for this. So, I am going to replace this by some C of n is more precisely. Now, let us try and expand the way we did it for merge sort or other algorithm and see how much what is the running time. So, so this is eventually next lecture I am going to I will give you ways of solving such recurrence relations more generally that will be very handy because the moment I write down the recurrence relation you will be able to know what the solution is. But for now, let us try and expand it and see what happens. So, 
So, again uh, if I have do one digit multiplication, I am going to spend one multiplication. So, that is let us write this boundary condition. So, let us let us expand it again assume n is a power of 2 whatever I need it. So, that every time because right now I want to just get get hold of what is the asymptotics, what is the running time asymptotic running time of it because what is our benchmark running time which we are trying to compare with n square, n square is what we had. So, I am going to say t of n is some c of n plus 4 times t of n by 2. So, let us expand it 4 times what is t of n by 2? t of n by 2 if I plug it in here c n by 2 plus 4 times t of n by 4 right. So, this is C n plus 2 C n which does not really look nice for me, but let us see why ok 4 square into n by 2 square ok. Let us do one more time and then try and observe the pattern C of n by 4 plus 4 times t of n by right because it is just by 2 only right. So, let us assume n is some power of 2, then how long will this go? C n into 1 plus 2 plus 2 square plus 2 cubed 2 power k minus 1 plus 4 power k because that is what t of n by 2 power k, n by 2 power k is n is 2 power k. So, 1 t of 1 is 1. So, this will be 1. So, that is 1 ok. So, what is this? So, this is a very useful thing to remember that this is a geometric series. Whenever you have a geometric series, the sum is essentially you know asymptotically same as the last term ok, some constant factor times the last term ok. So, this will be like 2 power k minus 1 maybe not that it matters plus 2 power k whole square. So, what does this give n square? So, not very useful because it looked very sophisticated nice because we are doing divide and conquer, but it is when we do the analysis it is the same as the old n square algorithm ok. Now, there is a cute way to improve this. So, somebody observed the following ok. So, where is the running time? I mean if I want to improve this use divide and conquer and some get a better algorithm than n square, what should I do right? Well, we are doing 4 multiplications here 2, 3, 4. If I manage to somehow improve this then I, so maybe let us say if I make this 3, then we will actually see that the running time improves from n square ok. But first question is how do I make it into 3? Here is this wonderful observation by a person called Karatsuba.
who observed the following a b is exactly this, but I can write this as follows a 1 b 1 into 10 power n plus a 2 b 2 plus a 1 plus a 2 into b 1 plus b 2 minus a 1 b 1 minus a 2 b 2. This whole thing of course, into 10 power n by 2. Okay, so, what am I said? a 1 b 1 into 10 power n I have copied it here. This a 2 b 2 I have copied it here. This middle term a 1 b 2 plus a 2 b 1 I have written it as a 1 plus b 2 a 2 into b 1 plus b 2 minus a 1 b 1 minus a 2 b 2. So, what is left is a 1 b 2 and a 2 b 1 times of course, 10 power n by 2. Okay, this looks like some jugglery I did. Does it, where, do, where is the saving happening? Now, look at it. How many multiplications did we do of numbers of size n by 2? Well, here is one multiplication. Here is another multiplication. Here is another multiplication because a 1 plus a 2 would be like an n by 2 plus 1 digit maybe. So, here is one multiplication, but what about this? We are already had it, we have counted, we it is not an additional multiplication. We already had it, so we are just only subtracting things. So, if you look at the number of multiplications of n by 2 by n by 2 digit numbers we are doing, how many it is? 3 now, because it is 1 here, 1 here and 1 here. So, this is not strictly n by 2 digit, little more than n by 2 digit, but it is not going to affect the asymptotics. So, now my recurrence relation is 3 times t n by 2, okay. For, for this, yeah. And then all the shifts and subtractions and all that, which I am going to absorb it in C n. It is a very cute observation, but now you will see that this gives you an improvement in the algorithm. Let us go and run through this whole exercise again of what we get there. So, T of n by 4 is C n by 4 plus 3 times T of n by 8. So, this would be no 3 by 2 whole square. So, when I do n s power of 2, then what I have is c n into 1 plus 3 by 2 plus 3 by 2 whole square k minus 1, 3 power k into 1, yeah. Yes, so so this is at most C n into again as I said this is 
roughly upper bounded by the last term because it's a geometric series. So it's or the plus 3 power k, but n is 2 power k. So this n and this 2 power k cancels. So what you have is essentially some 3 power k or what is 3 power k? I can write this as 3 power log n to the base 2 of course, right? Well, 2 to the log n to the base which is n power log 3 to the base 2. So, log 4 to the base 2 is 2, log 3 to the base 2 is 1.81, slightly better than 3, okay. So, it illustrates a lot of things, right. It will be nice to know if we have some tool available to figure out the solution to recurrence relation like this, we will get to that next because then we know what sort of, you know, smaller problems, how many of the problem they can target if I want to improve the runtime. And secondly, you know, it is such a fundamental problem, right. You can see this lying inside your CPU trying to multiply 100 digit numbers all the time. So, and it is startling to know that whatever you learnt in high school is not necessarily the best algorithm and to get to a better algorithm, you need this simple divide and conquer technique. It is not very sophisticated, okay. But now you can, you can, questions? So now, once we have this in our hand, we can now ask this question, how far can I generalize? Can I, instead of splitting it up into two parts, if I split it up into three parts and somehow take them and multiply, okay, is there a way to improve it and yes, people have done that. So, there is currently, which we will, I mean it requires more sophisticated thing, we will get to that later. Um, current best has the running time something like n log n, log log n and the final word is not said yet, okay, using some discrete Fourier transforms and so on, which we will, we will see some part of it, you know, later in the course. Yeah, okay. So, um, the, the model of the story is the divide and conquer is useful and it will be useful to know solution to these kind of recurrence relations handy, okay. So, here is another example where such a very simple trick has been applied to get much better algorithm. Let us look at matrix multiplication problem, okay. So, I have a matrix A and I have a matrix B. For simplicity, let us assume that both are of n by n and I want to compute the product. Okay. So, you all know how to do this matrix multiplication, standard algorithm you have learnt. Let us analyze the algorithm. How much time does it take? Let us, let us, hmm? what is the IJ term of
let us let us tell me the i j term of a b i j the, the product what do I have summation p k j where k goes from 1 to n right this is the standard formula to compute the product of two matrices. So, if you want to find the i j th entry you take the ith row you take the j th column multiply this plus multiply this plus multiply this and this and that gives you one entry of the product. So, how much time does it take to get one entry of the product n and how many entries are there? So, totally how much time n cubed ok. So, this is an n cubed algorithm. Right, there are n square entries each entry takes linear time. Now, let us say if I want to apply divide and conquer somehow to compute the product of this matrix. So, what is the natural thing to do? So, let us look at a 1 1, a 1 2, a 2 1 and a 2 2, b 1 1, b 1 2, b 2 1 where each of these is a big matrix of n by 2 by n by 2, right. Now, the standard multiplication algorithm would tell you the following. This would be like a 1 1 b 1 1 plus a 1 2 b 2 1 a 1 1 b 1 2 plus a 1 2 b 2 2 and so on so forth right. So, you can fill up this matrix. So, each one is an n by 2 by n by 2 matrix divided divide each matrix into 4 sub matrices each of size n by 2 by n by 2 and then I do my standard things like a 2 by 2 matrix multiplication. So, what would be the recurrence relation here? My T of n, how many matrix multiplications of half the size are you doing? 8, right? Is that clear? Because here is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, because it is basically 2, 2 by 2 matrices. Think of it as 2, 2 by 2 matrices and to multiply them will take you 8 multiplications. So, it is 8 T of n by 2 and plus, you know, doing all these additions all that I am going to absorb it into n square, ok. Exercise, solve this recurrence relation exactly the way we did, try and keep expanding it and see how much time it is. What is your guess? It turns out it is n cubed. not really an improvement because that is what the algorithm we started off with. Anyway, it looks sophisticated because we are dividing by half the size and so on, but it does not really improve, ok. But again, very similar to Karat Subha's observation, somebody named Strassen, very similar to the integer multiplication, he found a way to multiply two 2 by 2 matrices using 7 multiplications instead of 8, ok. With some additions and subtractions, you know, you, you, you have the picture of how we may manage to improve from 4 to 3 by doing some subtraction, but here it is a lot more complicated, ok. It is it is actually there in Karman's book, there is a whole one page of what are the products you look at, you know compute this product, that product, this product and then add this and this and subtract that and all that. Overall, it turns out 7 was enough and that improved the running time to n power log 3 is 8 base 2. 
so it will be an 7 base 2 which is something like 2.81 or something. Again this is a starting point for a whole series of improvements for matrix multiplication and uh, the final word is not said yet. But the point again is how divide and conquer is powerful ok. So, divide and conquer in general idea is to somehow break up your problem into smaller problems, solve them that is the divide part and then you have to do some combine part ok. And here are some examples where the naive way of doing it is not good enough because that does not give you something better than this, but with some clever twist you can improve the runtime ok. So, we have seen whole bunch of examples finding contiguous max contiguous subarray, multi integer multiplication, matrix multiplication. So, next time we will um, first talk about what is what is what is the some general solution to this kind of a recurrence relation and then we will see you know more examples of problems using divide and conquer ok. Stop here then. Thank you.